the wacky world of Multimedia J. And there it is, all back together now, up and running, all cleaned out, dusted out and everything. And the brand new plug-in drives, or at least drives in their enclosures, are all together. Just got to figure out what I want to use them all for. So, if we open up the door on Tuxedo here, all the five and a quarter bays are now finally full. With the last one being occupied by the new fan controller. Which, everything's all nice and flat. We just move everything with these little slider things. I'm not using, uh, I'm actually not, this is actually, by the way, an NZXT Sentry Mesh. And this one I'm not using for anything, so that's why I can slide it around and nothing happens. I found out the hard way that, uh, or should I say, I gave myself a rather stern reminder, or, you know, reminded myself the hard way, that a while back, to make things fit better in the case, I actually took off the fan, th the uh, fan holder thing on one of the hard drive cages. So, I can only put one 80mm fan down towards the bottom of the case. So I don't think the 80 millimeter fan thing's really going to work out all that much. Plus, I mean, look at look at all the noise that it adds. Right now, this is with everything. It's about 72 degrees in here. Everything's uh, all the way down. The outside temperature is 56. The processor is at 28, and the graphics card is at 34. Now here's the noise we're getting with uh, relatively quiet and whatnot. Everything's down. This thing only lowers the fans down to a minimum of, minimum of 40 percent speed, which for for some uh, for some 140 mil fans is not going to be very high for RPM. So I mean, just listen. Most of the noise you can probably hear is the CPU fan running at a reduced speed. So here's the kind of sound differences we're talking about. And here's what I have. Uh, here's actually what I did. I tried to do front to back. So the closer to the left, the closer to the front it is. This one I'm not using for anything because I didn't have a fan number one, which would be right about here for the hard drives. There's no heat coming out here anymore either. A lot of the heat issues where I had heat radiating out the front of the computer were actually being caused by the hard drives being right next to each other and not, having, not being spaced out enough for their heat to dissipate. So that was the combined heat of two mechanical hard drives basically running right on top of each other with no spacing, which was a stupid idea. I've also changed out the configuration of the drives to be friendlier to the laws of physics. The main SSD is on the bottom, so all the heat that's rising will go to the SSD's backup mechanical drive and then the data array on top with the, uh, the extra drive at the very top. So everything's all spaced out and uh, hopefully it's the mechanical drives that have issues instead of the SSDs, but anyways, uh, the mechanical drives are more than now due to be switched out. So no fan number one. Fan number two unfortunately is an 80 millimeter Vantex Stealth quiet fan from 10 years ago. But look how much noise it adds. That is the sound of 80 millimeters, an 80 mil fan spinning at about 2000 RPMs, which is above what the 120s, what, well, what the 140s and even the 120s spun at. So, it's not doing much of the temps either. 28 and 33 versus 28 and 33. So, it's, uh, I may just end up putting a fractal design in the front just to have some airflow coming into the front. If anything, it should help the video card more than anything. Now we get to the big ones. These are all 140s. So, we have the CPU side fan, the GPU side fan, and then the exhaust fan. And all three of these add just a little bit of low pitch rumble, which you'd expect from a larger fan. And uh, here's the thing. A while back, people were saying things to the effect of side fans are just a gimmick. No, they're not. They were originally part of something called Intel TAC, that is, thermally advanced chassis, a modification dash workaround to the ATX standard in the early 2000s when the last round of Pentium 4s were running really hot as were the Athlon XP's at the time. This is when we were hitting the limits of single core, uh, what we could do with a single core chip. So, basically the side fans we know today were originally a modification of the ATX standard, but they're not gimmicks. They do make quite a difference. Namely, when you're slamming the heck out of your system, you get to, you basically you're deciding which noise you want to hear from the computer, if any at all, if you have like water cooling or whatnot, because 
when you have a, a setup like mine, where a side fan is blowing right on top of the CPU cooler, a faster case fan moving air that's 140 mils is going to be quieter and more pleasing to listen to than a 70 millimeter stock cooler fan. Or hey, you know, maybe there's, or maybe you have a, a third party cooler or an aftermarket cooler with a 120 on it. But still, I mean, if you have to choose between the smaller fan spinning up and the bigger fan spinning up, why not spin up the bigger fan that moves the same CFM of air at a lower RPM in nearly all cases? So here's the kinds of sound differences we're talking about. CPU fan. Can you even hear it? <laughs> That's a 140 mil. You'll hear it when we compare it with uh, when we start stressing the CPU and we start comparing it to uh, what this does to the noise because the, the loudest fan in here is the processor fan on that horrible stock cooler. The video card can get pretty loud, but um, uh, anyways, it depends on the fan curve. And here's the GPU one. A little bit more noticeable. Hmm, weird. It's having a negative effect on the CPU speed. I'm hearing it, I'm hearing that spin up a little. Anyways, and lastly, the exhaust fan, which you can't hardly hear, but it's a 140 going through a funnel out of 120 in the back of the case. Hmm, that also has a negative effect on things, or maybe it could be that it's just getting hot in here. All right. So let's actually not even stress the system all that much. We're going to be playing with the Tropics Unigen benchmark from a couple of years ago, actually, 2008, 2010, etc. We've cranked all the settings all the way. We're going to run it in 1080p with all the fans turned all the way down. So here's what I'm talking about with the CPU fan. Let's run this demo here. It's loading up. All right, the 3D stuff is going. And you can probably, yep, there it goes. There goes that CPU fan ramping up. Let's let it really ramp up. So if you can imagine playing Skyrim or Guild Wars 2, <laughs> Unfortunately, the temperature sensors on the motherboard and the motherboard fan control stuff is, was very, very primitive. So, manual override, most definitely. So listen to that. That's a 70 mil fan cranking up to try and keep the system from cooking itself. Now let's fire up only the 140 mil that's directly over the CPU fan. the pitch is going back down, even though the demo is still running. So theoretically, if I really wanted to keep the noise down, I could just crank that, unless I had something stressing the GPU, in which case we hear the GPU start spinning up, and we just turn on number four. And if we want to exhaust things faster, turn on number five. But here's the kind of difference we're talking about in sound. So, you trade a higher pitched, more windy sounding 70 millimeter fan noise for some lower pitched noise by a bunch of 140 mil fans. And this is why cases with larger fans as standard sizes need to become more of a thing. And this is why enthusiasts would use stuff like this. And this is also why you really gotta design things out really well when you're making one of these things. I've been hearing about mini ITX systems that sound like hair dryers. Well, what kind of fan setup do you have? Which fans are spinning up to keep the main components cool? How does that work? So, I'm doing, I'm making this much of a difference. Turn that off, let it spin up again. We can hear it get loud again. I'm making this much of a difference with an old, obsolete piece of junk Chen Ming server style case from 2007. Not even needing a fractal design or something like that. So let's turn those on and just close the door. Listen to it slow down again. And yes, the Unigen benchmark is still running. Let's download a newer Unigen benchmark that really slams the graphics card. And let's see if we can get the graphics card to spin up. Well, the newest Unigen benchmark that I can find is Unigen Valley. So 
hovering around the 30 frame per second thing with this GTX 760 and it's in the 60s as far as temperature goes. Now, let's turn everything down and crank everything up, or listen to it all ramp up. There it goes! That's worse than before. <laughs> CPU! And that's really where the noise is coming from. It's, for whatever reason, maybe I have to adjust the fan curve on the graphics card, but the graphics card's floating around the 60s as far as uh, Celsius goes. So I'm wondering if maybe I might have to do some uh, work on the fan curve to get it to fire up to try and keep the GPU cooler and then maybe see if this thing does anything for it. But it's the same deal as before. If we turn up the graphics card intake but turn down the CPU intake, things start spinning up. Even when the front is turned back on. Even the exhaust doesn't do very much. Lowers it a little. Nowhere near as much as the dedicated side fan, though. <sighs> Maybe I just need a better CPU cooler. <laughs> Stop using stock coolers! Eh, that means I need to get a case that'll support third-party coolers and their associated backplates. <sighs> well, it's a pretty benchmark, anyways. Furmark GPU stress test. Full screen, anti-aliasing cranked all the way. Go. Do this burden test at your own risk. Let's break it. Oh, look at this. All right. Is there anything that says, um, all right. Oh, I'm starting to hear it. We finally found it. Fans at 54%. Uh, we have anything on the processor? 61 degrees. Oh, man. It's not going above 61, even for Furmark. I heard a little bit of ramp up. But if we turn that down... Yeah, there goes the processor. Hmm. There is an alarm that goes off if the processor passes 50 degrees Celsius, because the max temp is 67. So... Huh. Weird. I thought Furmark was supposed to be something really, really... Hmm. Oh, we do have a graph. So we're now up to 65 degrees on the GPU. So, let's crank, turn these two off, turn this up all the way. Oh, there goes the CPU, even though I cranked the GPU fan up all the way. Hmm. Okay, turn them both on, but no exhaust. 67 degrees. There's nowhere for the heat to go except through the power supply. Let's put the uh, exhaust back on. Hmm. Interesting. Turn everything off. Does it head towards 70? Now the processor starts taking off. Alright, before we start setting off alarms or blowing the CPU fan, let's turn these back on. But again, notice the difference. Side fans off, exhaust only, even with the front cranked all the way up. Yeah, that's not good.
Hmm. So this thing seems to be flying all over Furmark. Oh well. Well, if you next time you think, or next time you read something somewhere where someone says, oh, side fans are just a gimmick, remember, remember what you've seen here. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.